Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. I am so excited to share today's video with you. I am teaming up with two of my best YouTube friends and we are bringing you 27 meals for under $99. So I will be making nine meals, three breakfasts, three lunches, and three dinners all on a budget and I'll also be showing you an Aldi haul. So this week I am collaborating with Christine over at Frugal Fit Mom. If you haven't checked out her channel, she has awesome videos about food and budgeting and family life. She is so funny and I definitely love watching her. I will be linking her video and her channel in the description box below. So make sure that you stop over there to see what nine meals she has come up with for under $33. I also wanted to mention that we're doing a twist on this. We are making uh, some healthier and some low carb options. So uh, keep that in mind as you're watching these videos too. The next person that we are collabing with is my friend Gia over at Marriage and Motherhood. If you do not know Gia, you should definitely go check out her channel. She does a lot of family content. She loves doing shopping videos, Costco hauls. Her Costco hauls are legendary. And she also has a lot of keto content and Sunday setups on her channel. So I hope that you will check both of them out as soon as you are done watching this video. Okay, let's get started with this budget meal prep challenge. Okay guys, so I am currently at Aldi. I thought this would be the best place to get the most bang for my buck for $33 in groceries. So we're gonna go ahead and go inside. I don't have a specific game plan yet for the meals I'm going to create. I have a general idea, but of course it's gonna depend on what's available and how much things are. So I'll take you inside the store with me. I wanna get to your clothes, gotta get it right now. Okay, so um, the first thing I see when I walk in the door is sunflower seeds, and these are actually a great low carb salad topper. They have four grams of net carbs per quarter cup, and this bag is only $1.59. Avocados are usually cheap, at least at my Aldi. I have them on sale for 89 cents. They also have a great sale on berries right now, which is great. And um, this aged balsamic vinaigrette is only $2. So I think for one of the lunches, I'm gonna do a tuna salad. And tuna, the solid white tuna is 92 cents here. I know not all, all these have this, but mine has almond flour. It's not that cheap, $6.19, but at least it is an option here if you're doing low carb. This ham at Aldi is $2.35 for a little over half a pound, which is an insane deal, in my opinion, for ham. So I'm gonna grab some of this. Moment of truth, we're gonna see if we got in under $33. Okay, so I'm home from the store and I managed to meet my budget. I spent a total of $32.38 on all of these groceries. So the goal is to get three breakfasts, three lunches, and three dinners out of all of this, which I think is totally doable. Grab some green onions. This was actually more economical than buying a bag of their yellow onions. These were 69 cents. So I plan on using the tops for salads and the bottoms for you know seasoning food, just like you would regular onions. I also got some spinach. This bag of spinach at Aldi is $1.39, which is an awesome price. My plan is to use this for salads or in breakfast, like in an egg bake. Um, you can also cook it up and use it as a side for dinner or lunch. I also grabbed some of the extra fine green beans. These are some of my favorite to get at Aldi. One bag of these is $1.65 and there's quite a bit in here so my thought is that I'm probably gonna get way more than nine meals out of this but we'll see. Uh, I also got some iceberg lettuce this is probably the cheapest that you can buy obviously and it's cheaper to buy the head and wash it yourself so this was $1.19 this will be for salads and then you can also do like lettuce wraps with this for lunch with deli meat. I got one red pepper this was 96 cents I grabbed one head of garlic, which came out to 47 cents, and then three Roma tomatoes. These will be for sides and salads. 
Three of these tomatoes were 58 cents and it was more economical to buy these instead of the cherry tomatoes. I got one seedless cucumber for snacking and sides and salads. They actually had these on sale this week. 89 cents for this big cucumber, so that is a great deal. I grabbed a dozen eggs. Obviously eggs are uh, an inexpensive staple when, well basically with any diet, but especially when you're doing low carb. The eggs at my Aldi are 78 cents for a dozen, which is a great deal. Uh, zucchini is also another one of those things that is a great budget-friendly idea for meals. And I got this three-pack of zucchini for only $1.62. So my plan is to do some zoodles with this, as well as some roasted zucchini for sides. Um, for proteins, I decided to actually get some salmon. I wanted to challenge myself not just to get super cheap uh, protein during this challenge. And I have had all these salmon before and it's actually really good. So I grabbed this, it was $7.89 a pound. The portion I got was about, uh, well, about three quarters of a pound for $5.37. So that was a great deal there. They also had berries on sale this week. So my plan is to put those either with salads or breakfast or snacks. The strawberries were on sale for $1.89 and the blueberries were on sale for $1.49, which are both great prices for berries, especially in the winter. I was going to make homemade salad dressing, but I saw this on sale for $1.99. It's aged balsamic dressing, and it only has two grams of carbs per serving, so I thought this would be good with a spinach salad and maybe also as a marinade for the salmon. Uh, for one meal, I wanted to do like a marinara sauce with zoodles, and I looked at a lot of the different prepared marinara sauces that they had there, and a lot of them are pretty heavy on carbs. And so, well, and not only that, but they're also more expensive. So I decided to go with a can of crushed tomatoes and make my own sauce. If I didn't mention this before, we aren't including pantry like essentials in our cost. So things like salt, pepper, oil, um, you know, seasonings, mayonnaise, stuff that you would normally have in your pantry and condiments, we're not counting those in the total. So these were 79, 79 cents for a big can of crushed tomatoes. This was also a great deal. I got four of these uh, third pound beef patties for $3.29, which is a great price. This comes out to about a pound and a third of ground beef and so my thought is to use two of these for like regular um, burgers like bunless burgers and then I'm going to make the other two into marinara sauce to go with the zoodles. You guys also saw that in the store that I got some sunflower kernels. Uh, these are good for a snack and if you eat like a whole lot of them they're not necessarily super low carb but you can have a quarter cup which is actually quite a bit um, for four net carbs but these are good on salads and they give like a nice crunch. So I decided to grab those. These were $1.59. Um, and then I also decided to get some cream cheese. Um, I'm not sure quite, I have a few ideas, but I'm not quite sure what this is going to be exactly for yet. Um, all these cream cheese is 79 cents for a 16 ounce, or I'm sorry, an eight ounce package. Uh, I also got some sharp cheddar cheese. They have the best price around here on cheese. And this was, $1.69 for eight ounces, so this will go for snacks and breakfast. I also got some smoked ham. This was $2.35 for just over a pound of deli meat, which is a great price. And then last but not least, I got some tuna. I decided to get the solid white tuna. This was 92 cents. You can go with the regular tuna for like 69 cents, but since I had it in the budget, I decided to get that. So that is everything I got for $32.38. I will show you now what I'm going to make. So I'm going to start out this meal prep by hard boiling six eggs. These are a great option for meal prep because not only can you use them as quick snacks or breakfast, but eggs can be made into so many awesome things for meal prep like deviled eggs and egg salad, which is what I'm going to be showing you today. So I'm not doing mine in the instant pot this time. I'm just going to boil them on the stove. So I put my eggs in cold water. I bring them to a boil and then I turn off the heat and let them sit in the hot water for 
15 minutes and this cooks them perfectly with no green ring. I went ahead and let them sit in an ice bath for about 30 minutes just to make sure that they were completely cooled and that helps the shells come off really easily. I like to peel mine on a paper towel because that helps absorb some of that water and then I keep that bowl of water nearby so I can rinse the excess shells off of the eggs. So about this challenge, I was super excited to do this. Um, we kind of had a talk and formulated this challenge, myself and Christine and Gia. And really what we wanted to do was show you that healthy meal prep can be done on a tight budget. And actually all of us said that we had extra food at the end. And so definitely we didn't just make enough for these nine meals. I probably had enough for at least six to seven more meals as well. So I'm gonna show you how I usually make my egg salad. Uh, I don't have a fancy recipe, but this is the one that I normally use. So I like to chop my eggs up using an egg slicer. This is just an inexpensive one that I bought online. I'll link it down below. I just place the egg in the slicer and then turn it over crossways and it makes the perfect little chunks of egg to mix up in your salad. Now typically I send this to work with Adam because he loves egg salad. Sometimes I'll put it with crackers or cucumber slices to spread the egg salad on or sometimes honestly he'll just eat it plain. I am going to add some egg, I'm sorry, not eggs, some mayo to that as well as some relish. And then I like to add a little bit of yellow mustard to mine as well as some salt and pepper. And then sometimes I add a little bit of sweetener or Splenda. I think I did add about one packet of that to this particular recipe. Uh, you can leave that out if you don't like that sweet taste in your egg salad. Thanks to sit screaming when I'm coming home tonight. But living quick in the world, gotta get it right now. So here is how I prepped the egg salad for a lunch option. I just put it in a glass divided container with some sliced cucumber. I garnished it with some green onion. I put some berries in there, strawberries and blueberries. And I also included some cheddar cheese and sunflower seeds on the side. Okay, so the next recipe I'm going to share is a ham and egg muffin recipe. I'm going to start out by washing some of my produce. Uh, you guys have watched my channel know that I always wash all of my produce in my OXO salad spinner with vinegar just to make sure that all the dirt gets loosened off. And if you don't have a salad spinner, you definitely need one, not only for washing your greens, but all of your produce. So I'll link the one that I have down below. They are on Amazon for less than $30. So typically I just soak all of my together but then I do spin the green onions dry since they're a little bit more delicate I rinsed out my spinner and next I'm going to wash up my berries so I'm just putting the blueberries and strawberries into the salad spinner I'll splash some vinegar in there and let those sit in cold water for about 10 minutes and rinse them off sometimes I get questions about do my berries taste like vinegar and the answer is no because I make sure that I rinse them off really really well before I put them in the refrigerator. Another common question is do they last all week? And typically my berries don't stay in the fridge for more than about three days because my kids eat them. Um, so I'm not sure you know, how long they would last. I would say if you're not gonna use them up within four days, just go ahead and put them in a freezer bag, uh, stick them in the freezer, and then you can use them later, later for fruit smoothies. Regardless of what type of meal prep I'm doing, I always, always make sure to wash all of my produce. That way we have it ready to go in the fridge during the week. It helps us waste less and it helps us eat more of the produce that we buy. So here are my berries. You guys will see um, throughout the video how I incorporated these in with my meals. So the recipe I'm sharing here is basically just a ham and egg muffin recipe. I bake these in the oven in silicone muffin liners. This is also uh, can be done in the Instant Pot. I'll link a video that I have down below um, specifically for egg bites in the Instant Pot. But I really wanted to make sure that this uh, recipe was more accessible for everyone. So I'm just going to use my oven. I'm beating together six eggs with a splash of half and half, or you could use milk. I also season that with salt and pepper. And then I am going to add a little bit of sriracha in there. You could also add a squirt of mustard. That would be really good 
with the ham and cheese. And these are super customizable. You can really make them any way you want with whatever veggies and meat and cheese you have in your freezer. I'm sorry, not in your freezer, in your refrigerator. Uh, I'm going to make some with spinach and tomato and cheese, and then I'm going to make some with ham and green onion and cheese. So I'm just chopping up my produce. I chopped up some spinach and tomato, trying to leave out most of the seeds so that the egg muffins wouldn't be wet, and some green onions, and then I'm going to chop up some of the ham as well. So these are great to reheat during the week. I love being able to pop a couple of these into a container and take them to work. I just heat them up in the microwave for about 45 seconds and they are a great uh, low carb, high protein breakfast that keeps you going throughout the morning. Uh, so I went ahead and put my veggies and meat into the silicone muffin tins. Make sure that you spray those with cooking spray, uh, otherwise you might have a hard time getting them out. I'll link those silicone muffin cups that I have down below as well as the muffin tin. Uh, I find that both of these items work really great, not only for regular muffins, but for these uh, healthier breakfast egg muffins as well. So once all of my ingredients are in, I put the, sh the shredded cheese on top and then I'm just going to divide the egg mixture evenly over all of the muffin cups. This is why I used a mixing bowl with a spout so that I could pour those in. Uh, I went ahead and popped these in the oven. I'm cooking them at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. You can judge um, when they're done. You can see that they puff up a little bit. You just wanna make sure that they're cooked all the way through and that they spring back a little bit when you touch them lightly. So after those have a chance to cool, you can pack them into a container. And I am just serving these with some berries. These were great too, uh, both for Adam and I to take to work during the week. If I would have left the green onions out, I think my kids would have eaten them as well. So if you guys remember in the grocery haul portion, I got that great deal on these beef patties at Aldi. So my plan for these was to cook two of them up to have as bunless burgers, one for a lunch meal prep and one for a dinner. And then you'll actually see me use the other half of the beef later for a, uh, a marinara sauce with ground beef. So I'm using some garlic pepper. Thank you again to the subscriber that sent me that. Um, that is a great seasoning to um, use for burgers. And I just like to cook these until they are brown on both sides. I like to also cover the skillet with, um, just loosely tent it with some foil so that I make sure that the patties cook through. And then I'll turn the heat off and add some cheddar cheese to the top. And then I'm just gonna let those sit and cool while I assemble the rest of everything. The cheddar cheese is really, really good on the burgers. So this is how I assembled this for dinner. I have a large iceberg lettuce leaf with my cheeseburger and a pickle slice. I also heated up some of the frozen green beans and served a sliced tomato on the side. This is a delicious dinner that will keep you full without all of the added carbs. I would definitely serve this with some mayo and mustard. So for the remaining couple of eggs that I had that were hard boiled, I'm just gonna make these into some deviled eggs really quick. I like to prep these for either myself or Adam to take as a snack or lunch during the week at work. And then they also work great to prep uh, to have as a side for dinner as well. So I went ahead and cut those eggs in half. I just scooped the yolks out and I'm putting them in a bowl with a little bit of mayo and a little bit of mustard. I'm adding just a little bit of pickle relish, some salt and some pepper. And I like to mix this up with a fork so that I can mash the egg yolks and stir it together. And then once that is well combined, I'll just scoop it into the egg white halves. So if I'm making a large batch of deviled eggs, I, I do like to put the filling into a Ziploc bag and cut the corner off and pipe it in that way. But since I was only making these couple, I just went ahead and used a spoon to uh, spoon that into the egg whites and it worked just fine. I like to sprinkle these with a little bit of paprika for color. So this is another example of a low carb, high protein, healthy lunch you could take with you to work or eat during the week. I have some deviled eggs, a burger with some cheddar cheese 
cheese. And then I just quickly assembled this salad with the ingredients that I had, spinach, red peppers, cucumber, some of that balsamic dressing, and sunflower seeds. Okay, next up is a dinner and we are going to make some roasted salmon. The portion that I got was big enough to cut into two pieces. So I'll be using one portion for a dinner and one portion for a lunch. I am putting this on a parchment paper covered tray with um, some olive oil, uh, sprinkling that on the top along with salt and pepper. And then I'm going to use some of my garlic and crush that over the top of each piece of salmon. I'm using one garlic clove per piece of salmon. I really love this garlic press. It works great and I can put it in the dishwasher. So I'll link that down below if you guys are in the market for a good one. I also put some Dijon mustard on the top of these. And then I'm just using a uh, pastry brush to kind of brush that mustard and garlic all over the salmon fillets and then I'll roast these in the oven. If you're not watching your carbs, you can also drizzle some honey or maple syrup on these. That is really good along with the mustard too. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these in the oven. Uh, I'm cooking them at 400 or 425 for about 10 to 15 minutes. It will depend on the thickness of your salmon. And if you're going to reheat this, just keep in mind that you might want to undercook it a little bit so that it doesn't end up overcooked when you reheat it. So on the side, I'm going to prep some roasted veggies. I'm going to do zucchini and red pepper. This is a great combination to not only make as a side for dinner, but these roasted veggies keep really well in the fridge. So you can prep them on the weekend. And then if you want to make salads out of them or Buddha bowls throughout the week, it works really great. So I'm just using one zucchini and then I'm also going to chop up some red pepper. I'm going to season these very simply with olive oil, salt, and pepper. Um, I think maybe some garlic powder, but you can use whatever seasonings you have on hand. It's a great opportunity to get some of those spices out that you maybe haven't used for a while and use them up. Not only are roasted veggies a great budget-friendly side for dinner, but it's also a great way to use up some vegetables that you might have in your crisper drawer in the refrigerator. If you have peppers or squash or mushrooms or whatever you have, throw them on the tray and roast them all together. Here are my completed veggies. I roasted these at 425 for about 20 to 25 minutes, and this is the dinner I am serving up. So I have my roasted mustard garlic salmon along with my uh, roasted vegetables and I put a small spinach salad on the side with spinach, tomatoes, cucumber, a little bit of shredded cheese, and some sunflower seeds and that balsamic vinaigrette. So with the other piece of salmon, I'm actually going to prep this for a lunch. What I did was I put it into my salad container on a bed of spinach. I topped that with some sunflower seeds for crunch and some green onions. And then I also included some of my berries, some strawberries and blueberries. Uh, strawberry spinach salad is really good with that balsamic vinaigrette. If you had feta cheese, you could add that. That would be a delicious addition as well. Right now. So I realized when I was editing this video that I actually made four lunches instead of three. So I guess you guys are getting a bonus and I'm an overachiever. But for this particular lunch, I just prepped a lettuce wrap. So I have a large leaf of iceberg lettuce with ham and cheese and green onion and tomato. I put some mayo on the side for serving and then I have some berries and some sunflower seeds on the side as well. So delicious lunch for the week, high protein, low carb. Okay, so the next dinner I'm showing you is marinara sauce with some zoodles. So I'm going to start out making the marinara sauce. I'm going to chop up some of my scallions, mostly the white part and a little bit of the green. I'm also going to uh, crush up some cloves of garlic, and then I will end up sauteing these veggies along with my meat as the base for my marinara sauce. That we should be together It's heavy weather We're heading for tonight You better take what you can Cause the time is right now We only need the two Another thing I always get asked about is the chef's knife that I use to chop veggies. This one is a Xylus and I'll link the set that I have down below. I really like them a lot. 
So to start out my sauce, I'm putting a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of my nonstick pan, and I'm going to crumble up the beef patties into the skillet and just let those brown until they are cooked through. I've also been getting questions on these new pans that I got. They are green pan brand and they're blue on the outside. They're very pretty. Um, if I can find a set on Amazon, I'll link them down below, but I got them as a gift and they've been pretty hard to find, but I'll do the best I can. So I went ahead and seasoned the ground beef with salt and pepper and some Italian seasoning. And I also added the onions and the garlic in there. And then I'm just using my Pampered Chef mix and chop to break up that ground beef and saute it until it was uh, cooked through. Now this beef is not super lean, so there was quite a bit of grease that I had to drain off. So I went ahead and did that and wiped out the skillet and I'm adding my can of crushed tomatoes back in there. I'm just seasoning this with some Italian seasonings that I have in my spice cabinet. So dried basil, dried Italian seasoning, um, onion powder. I'm going to put some more fresh garlic in there as well as some salt and pepper. And then I'll heat that back up and add my beef uh, back to the mixture and let that simmer until all of the, the flavors are combined. So I was actually really surprised at how much sauce this made with that two thirds of a pound of ground beef and the one large can of crushed tomatoes. I had enough sauce for four people easily. Um, so to keep this a little bit healthier, I am using zoodles in place of pasta. I have a zoodler. I forget what this thing is called, but it was like seriously less than $10. <laughs> um, I'll link the one I have down below. It's very not fancy, but it does the job for me. So I'm just going to run my zucchini through that. You could also use yellow squash if you wanted. And then I like to just cut the noodles in half so they aren't quite as long. And then some people don't cook these. They just put their hot sauce on top. I prefer to saute them in a pan with a little bit of olive oil. So that's what I'm doing right now and seasoning them with a little bit of salt. And I just saute these over medium heat for maybe only about five minutes or less until they are crisp tender. So this is how I'm serving this up. The zoodles on the plate along with the marinara sauce. If you have some Parmesan cheese in the refrigerator, go ahead and add that. And then I served it with a salad on the side. So iceberg lettuce, cucumber, uh, tomato, red pepper, sunflower seeds, and some shredded cheddar. And then you can use the dressing of your choice with that. So I wanted to show you guys after I did this prep how much food I had left over. So you can see the sauce I had left over. I still had some spinach. I actually didn't even use the can of tuna or the cream cheese that I bought. So I'll have that for later. I have a bunch of dressing left, uh, some green onions. I had some, actually a lot of iceberg lettuce left and a zucchini, a half of a cucumber, a little bit of red pepper and some berries. So I really hope that you you enjoyed this budget uh, meal prep and seeing all of the ingredients and what I made out of them. I had a lot of fun filming this. Make sure that you check out both Christine's and Gia's videos to see the other meals. I'll have them linked down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye.